How you doing, buttholes uh, and buttholettes? Brain Smasher, back again with you. Thank you for joining me. I am continually humbled by having over 3,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. So, thank you for your time. Uh, metal onward. So, uh, we're going to be going back to the collection alphabetically, as we do. Um, but I've also got a, got a few things in. So I'm going to merge kind of a collection update with the usual alphabetical kind of stuff. Um, you'll see why. Yada, yada, yada. Um, what we're listening to is fucking metal. Uh, Satanic Black Metal by a band from Germany known as Isegrim. I-S-E-G-R-I-M. Um, I just kind of, I've always had this. Just kind of picked it up last night, actually. Uh, and it fucking rules. Big, giant, fucking Germanic black metal riffs. It's really good. Um, it's, like, devilish and beastly and um, super riffy, but the drums are just fucking relentless. It's really, really good. Um, there's this open. There's an opener on one of these songs, maybe track five or something. Oh, it's so fucking brutal. Um, but it just really ticks a lot of boxes for me. Um, this, I think, is the only full length they put out. And the thing about these guys is, and it kind of the, the thing that they did kind of annoyed me about a lot of other bands of their time period. But by the way, this came out uh, in 2000, and they had this EP they put out, maybe self-titled, or maybe it was even a, maybe another album or something. But it was all like Venom covers, and I remember back then in like the late 90s. So many bands wanted to be known as paying tribute to Venom. And a Venom or a band, like, I never fucking give a shit about. I, like, I get it. They laid the groundwork for metal and all that. But, I mean, the Beatles laid the groundwork for rock and roll. And I just hate that, like, leveraging credibility to one band for saying that you have to like them. It was never just one band. It wasn't just Black Sabbath who fucking started metal. I mean, come on. Um, anyways, uh, Isagrim, as I soar away from the topic so quickly, uh, is good stuff. And here you go. So, I haven't gotten that much stuff in uh, in the past week. And this is not much stuff. Um, and some of it I haven't really listened to yet, so I can't really elaborate much on it. So I won't. And the pile of stuff that comes up alphabetically is stuff that I've kind of recently covered, so I'm going to be kind of double dipping. So that's why I'm just kind of like smashing it all together. I say that, and it'll probably wind up being a fucking 39-minute video anyways. Um, so let's get... God, do I want to show that or not? Let's get into this. Um, so this is Agony, the first Defiance, um, out on combat, under one flag, 80... Six, something like that and this isn't really the record that I thought it was but I don't mind because I only paid 10 bucks for it um, I, I must have this confused with some, with some other band um, or whatnot. I haven't listened to this copy yet but I feel like I've listened to this I think on YouTube a couple of times and liked it and the thing about the reason that I I guess really the reason I picked it out was I was in this record store um, last weekend that has just like a pitiful selection of shit like fucking picture discs from flesh grind for 38 bucks and shit like that just like early 2000s fucking death grind weird picture lp kind of versions just totally overpriced it was just like sad but this was 10 bucks and i thought i had seen aaron metal theologian talk about this record and i don't know apparently it's like a swedish uh kind of crust band doing like a thrash kind of deal or whatnot. Um, so that's the only vinyl of this edition. So, also picked up Disharmonic Orchestra with Exposition Prophylax, their debut. Um, just really wanting to dig into this band's discography uh, since the Radical Research podcast came out. They did a whole episode on their discography, if I'm not mistaken. Um, haven't spun it yet, but um, I don't know. I'm sure I've heard their tracks here and there uh, throughout the years. Picked this up kind of on the cheap for what it is. It's an original Nuclear Blast press. Music to mangle your mind. 
I am just so in love with this time period and this kind of music and this, like the big label death metal kind of stuff from like 94 to 97 or so right now. And when I can pick up a copy of something like that for under $20, I'm really all over it. Um, yeah. So next, uh, we've got Evulsion with Dimensions of Darkness. Justin Stubbs, who you are already subscribed to, right? Uh, was talking about this. Actually, he played this in his last video or two or something like that, and he also saw them live. I always overlooked this album back in the day because the cover doesn't do anything for me, and I always thought this logo was, like, really lazy or whatnot. But I'd never heard anyone talk about him, so I didn't know what I was missing out on. Um, and I spun this last night. And it's really, really, really good. Doom Death from Atlanta, Georgia. Funny thing was, my buddy Evan March sang for this band, and I never knew that. I don't know how I never fucking knew that. We worked with him pressing albums for 15 years. Never once did that come up. Uh, next in from Russia, this is the new one from Elderwind. Self-released Digipack, and I don't know what the English title of this is because there is not an English... There's not much English on this. Um... And I haven't listened to it yet. So, looking forward to keeping to spinning it and finding out what it's like. I'm sure it's as great as Magic of Nature, which I really, really, really do love. Once I saw that this was announced on Bandcamp, I immediately ordered it. So, that's Elderwind. Also got in uh, Sisters of Mercy with Floodland. Now, way back in the day, I was friends with some indie rock guys who were nuts about like Bauhaus and Depeche Mode and Sisters of Mercy and I think my buddy Matt, rest in peace said that this was his favorite album of all time uh, so I went to the record store and I bought it I picked it up and uh, the girl at the checkout was just super goffed out black makeup and black hair and fishnets and stuff like that and she picks up the CD and looks at me and she goes this is my favorite album of all time. <laughs> and I was like, cool. <laughs> and I didn't like it. The stuff about like the the back backing vocal chorus kind of stuff going on, it just it just didn't work for me, right? I didn't really, I guess, understand what kind of an album it was or what to expect. Um, but I really do love this album and even first last on always is also a great Record by them too. So I picked this up at a store for a couple of bucks Also picked up this fucking Strange beast of a record. Have you ever heard Satan's host? Metal from hell. This was in the the neighborhood thrift store. I Don't know how it got there. It's such a fucking weird album. So I first heard of Satan's host because now so I used to be a fucking devout immortal fan and it wasn't very often that immortal would wear a band shirt other than like venom or blasphemy or something that I already knew so there's very few pictures of a bath or demon as wearing band shirts that that I didn't already know so when I saw a photo of them wearing a band shirt playing live of a band I didn't know, I immediately checked it out. So there's a picture of a bath, maybe I can find it, put it in the video, but he's wearing a Satan's Host shirt. And I thought, wow, I gotta check that out. So the story ends with this band sucks and this album fucking sucks. I can't believe how stupid this is. It's, I don't know, it, like, it, it wants to be devilish and it wants to be fucking satanic. Um, this probably originally came out, I think, I want, I want to say like 84 or something. This is an old Metal Records reissue from 2004. <clears throat> but this is one of those bands that was like pushing the envelope of the, the satanic themes. Satanic themes. Um, but their sound was still just fucking like 70s butt rock with glammy vocals. And Satan's host, the thing about this album that just ruins it is the singer just he wants to have seven layers of himself singing these fucking stupid wordy choruses over every section of the song just smearing himself all over the music it's 
a fucking disaster. So, yeah, I'm glad I own that now. Um, also, they had this, which I thought I had a copy of, and apparently I did size Hail Horror Hail. Um, I don't know how, even in my disc album, which I try and diligently keep up with, said that I have a copy of it. So I don't know if I somehow fucking turned it in there for a buck or two or whatnot, but I own it again. Sai is a weird band from Japan. You should know Sai. Um, also got in this. The band is named Eeg YGG. Uh, Self-titled. This is their only record. And this came out in 2011. And this is some really, really good Ukrainian, really kind of grandiose pagan metal. Pretty, It's pretty much black metal, but not all the way. Either way, it's... Uh, killer. Okay, ease. We are, I realized the other day, kind of surprised, we are starting shelf number six of 15. And that feels kind of like a good chunk. I realized we finished five shelves and we're on to six. So here we go. Entombed, Left Hand Path. Love this record. It's a fucking staple of the genre. You must own it. I'm an idiot for not owning it sooner than two or three years ago. This is the opener of the track that I was talking about. So beefy and chunky and good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I haven't heard this in years. Clandestine, however, is the reason I thought that early Entombed was eh, and I was fucking wrong. If you've only heard Clandestine, it's a great record, but it's not very often that a band's early or first two records are so different. And it is because a member left after this album, and I think came back or something or whatnot. But uh, if you've only heard Clandestine, do yourself a favor and let this album crush this one. So good. Um, I'm not elaborating on it because in like two or three last video of my videos in the last year or so, I've gone crazy about Left Hand Path. Now, Wolverine Blues is a great record. Um, really its only problems are that it isn't Left Hand Path or Clandestine or whatnot. Um, it's super, super fun, and I kind of don't like anything else that sounds like this. You know, it kind of was a genre creator. I just don't think a lot of people care about the kind of death and roll kind of shit that a lot of these Swedish bands wound up going nuts over. But it's really fun. I haven't listened to that in a really long time. It's been... It's kind of one of those like summer driving with your windows down kind of records. Good stuff. So next we have and Venom Ascension. Local band to me. Um, and it's not often that like I can pretty much count on one hand the number of black metal bands from Iowa. Um, and these guys were friends of mine. I think I found them on MySpace. Probably 15 years ago now. Um, saw them live a couple of times, hung out with them, um, always been a supporter. I have two of their albums. Now this is Merkland, which is really good, and this is Elkenrod. Uh, and the album that I don't have a copy of, I want to say was the one I really liked more than these two. But they were a two-piece band, the drummer was just fucking brutal as all hell. Um, and the guitar player was really young, and but like they cranked out like five albums in maybe six years or so. They were just boom, 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 boom. 
And then, um, I can't remember what happened to them. Either way, they, they quit making music together, which was kind of sad, but uh, the drummer has a solo project, which is really good, um, called Axe. It's in total tribute to Druk. Um, so that's cool, but and Venom Ascension is good stuff. I'll see if I can find a link down below. They were put out by another friend of ours. The label is called Rune Fire Records, um, based out of Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. Um, next, we've got Eiffel Dua, who I've talked about in several videos. <coughs> this is the EP that precedes this brilliant masterpiece, Hemmed by Darkness. Shaped, hemmed by light, shaped by darkness. Super progressive, serpentine kind of progressive metal. Um, it started out as a solo black metal band, but uh, is it? I think Steve DiGiorgio plays bass on this EP, which is called uh, "On Death and Cosmos." But uh, Karen Crisis sings on this, and it's really inter interesting. Let me know what you guys think of this stuff. I I feel like I'm the only one spouting about this record and this has been one of the more one of the most compelling albums that I have discovered in the last probably five years or so I would say it's really really sick next we've got Epidemic Decameron picked this up in the same used bin down the street for four or five bucks that is the cat scratching the litter box what is my life uh, with Decameron um, I did. I had never heard of this band before. It's kind of like that brutal thrash kind of genre, kind of late '80s era kind of stuff. Actually, this came out in '92 on Metal Blade, um, and it's pretty good. It's just not really my kind of thing. Um, I'm sure someday it'll really hit its mark. This record, though, this is Epitaph with Seeming Salvation, Swedish old school death metal. It's so damn good. Um, the Crypt Dark Symphonies put this out uh, recently. It originally was released in 92. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with 92. Um, this has got tons of extra photos in the booklet. Man, even, even if you don't want to buy a release, a reissue from The Crypt, uh, because you own an original copy of it, or anything, um, it is really worth it a lot of times because they put so much extra stuff in, in the releases. It's just such a lovingly done repackaging and you know putting demos in addition to an album. Really, really like the crypt. So I want you to listen up real closely here because we are talking about Equinox. Equinox, man. Um. If you're familiar with Druid Lord, this has a member, maybe two members of Druid Lord. I still haven't listened to fucking Druid Lord. I know I need to get around to it. But this is pre-Druid Lord. And we will start with the first album, Return to Mystery, out on Unisound Records in 95. This is recorded at More Sound Studios. So it's a surprise that I've never heard of this band until... Quite recently, maybe in the last two years or so, thanks to my buddy Tanner. Um, and this is just such a brilliant melding of styles that I'm kind of surprised I haven't heard so successfully done before until Equinox came along. <clears throat> I cannot urge you enough to check this out. If you want to hear, seriously, riffs from Day Mysterious Don't Say Tannis played in the style and kind of along with riffs that sound like Death's Leprosy melded together in a style that just makes perfect sense. It's so listenable and so fucking just, just got so much fucking power and might to it. Uh, can't recommend this enough, man. So it's like brutal death metal. Not really like the typical term of brutal death metal, but it's just so fucking unrelenting and just powerful and mighty. Um, but the riffs are super dark, like the, the Mysterious Dumps of Tennis by Mayhem are. It's it's so cool. Uh, so then we've got a couple EPs uh, and whatnot. This is As the Moon Swallows the Sun. 
And this is a collection of uh, rare kind of B-sides and shit like that. Now you should be able to find all of, this, all of these, I think, in distros. Use the metal detector, the metal detector with a K, dot com. You should find distros that are selling these three for $10 or less. I urge you to do it. Um, this is a six song EP called The Immortal Kind, put out on Metabolic Records in 2006. I think this is the last thing they did right before they broke up. Um, this is, like I said, a collection of demos and live material. The live materials and, and it's like some covers, um, Haunting the Chapel. I thought they did a cover. Oh, that riff. Here we go. Upon the Throne of Eternity EP, demo tracks, another demo track unreleased tracks and then live stuff so this is a collection of EPs but not double dipping with this EP here then we have the second uh, full length uh, Journey into Oblivion from 2003 and I'm not going to try to tell you the difference between this one and this one because I always reach for this one and it's sad because I should really get acquainted with this one um, in fact today that's what I'm listening to from now on. Now, two more, no, one band, two releases. Um, more friends of mine, weirdly enough. So another black metal band from Iowa. Now these are the guys that I got into metal with and these guys had just gotten into metal like about two or three years before me. Um, they went from, you know, your Pantera and Metallica, shit like that, and quickly evolved into Gorefest and At The Gates and Carcass and Fear Factory, Bolt Thrower, shit like that. So, and then together, you know, they kind of got me caught up in the last couple of years that they were, they had been listening to, and together we got into stuff like Abigor and Thy Primordial and Necropolis stuff and Dissection and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, so this is, this came out in 1997? This is a self-released demo recorded by these guys and my best friend who was in some of my videos, Ron, recorded this in his home studio. Um, it's really, really amateurish, but it's a really interesting kind of timepiece for the late 90s. Um, and you should still probably be able to pick this up in some distros, weirdly enough, because they pressed a thousand copies of the disc only because they couldn't afford to do the booklets. So what we did was we pressed a thousand discs and uh, went to Copyworks and we found out the cheapest price of <laughs> doing the packaging was just running these off color copies and hand cutting every one of these. So every single copy of this record I trimmed the back tray card of over the course of one weekend. My hands were so fucking sore and my fingers were so sick of it. Anyways, the style of this is really, really weird. There, there's some death metal kind of leanings. It's super riffy, super complex. Those guys were so young and trying so hard to write just furiously strange. The thing was, they followed through with a really incredible demo. Um, I actually have two copies of it. I might do a giveaway or something, but you should be able to pick this up for super cheap, and I'll tell you why. But style-wise, um, they were just trying way too hard, and they, they did release and record a great album, but they just did not follow through with distribution or selling or putting it out there or whatever. They just didn't know how to get the copies of this record in the hands of labels or distros or whatnot. Um, so the copies of this album just languished in dude's attic for years and years and years and years and years until finally my buddy and I, who started a label Pagan Flames, were like, what are you doing with all those copies of that old record? Give it, you know, we'll buy them from you and we'll just distribute them through our label or whatnot or trade them or whatever. We just needed to get them 
fucking out there because this came out in 97 and by two, like 2003 or 4 um, there would probably only been maybe 50 copies sold um, which was just sad it's just a, it was a weird time to think that you had to seriously manually do the drowning crown work to get your album out there because there was no internet and if you didn't have like a pen pal relationship and tape trading kind of community connections you're just sitting there in Iowa at your lemonade stand holding your black metal record hoping somebody comes along and wants a black metal record from Iowa it, it's the weirdest thing um, so that's Erasmus sorry I didn't say that Erasmus with Forged for Proof Etern uh, the artwork on it is killer I really like this record it's been a long time it's just kind of one of those things, it's, it's weird to listen to your friend's band, because it doesn't sound like a band that you're just like in love with, it's like your friends who happen to have done a good album. Uh, so anyways, um, a year later or so they wrote another album, um, and I have a CDR copy of it here, reason being it was never re released physically, officially, or whatnot. <coughs> um, so the funny thing was they wrote the album, they bought a home studio and recorded these crazy songs. You gotta hear this weird shit. got this on my Bandcamp page so I'll link it down below um, but what we did was I could tell that the band was gonna break up after recording that album the second album and uh, I could tell that they had recorded another album and no one was ever going to hear this and the, to, to this day I was right um, and no one would ever hear the talent of my buddy Chris's drumming so at that time, I was only the vocalist of my band, Satan's Almighty Penis, and I said to Ron, why don't we go over to Chris's house and record like an hour of him just playing drums, whatever, just improvising stuff, and we will cut it up, chop it up, and turn it into the drums that will be the next Satan's Almighty Penis album. So that's what we did, and it turned out awesome. It's not a drum machine, it's a real live drummer, but it's a really, really strange concoction. Um, I don't know, I've never heard any complaints about the drums. Um, I don't know if people can tell that uh, that's what we did or not. Anyways, it turned out really cool. Um, and it kind of, it really aided us in songwriting and like propelling the band to uh, really just leap off from that point. Because before that, uh, we could use a drum machine. And after that, I was the drummer. So we used that, that hour long drum take and then I had to learn how to play drums because we had already used up all the drums. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's it. Um, check out Erasmus for sure. Hung out with the guy last weekend and it was fun. So uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.